Hey everybody, this is the Bowtie Sales Guys. This is a very special edition of the Bowtie Sales Guys. It is. Because we are not uh, scores of miles apart. We are we are right here next to each other at a table. Good to see you, Mike Papakota. It's good to see you. I'm excited that we actually get to do this in the same room. So That's we'll right. see how it goes. That's right. <laughs> we, uh, I don't know, We th this might be so much fun doing it in person together live on Facebook, on YouTube, on the podcast, on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and Google Play and all those places that we might make a habit out of this. You never know. I mean, listen, if it works out well, we don't get into a fist fight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only thing that would make this better is if we had cigars in our hands. Ah, listen, that may, down the road, that may happen. But no, I'm excited. It's good to be in the same spot with you. I haven't seen you in a while. I know. So it is. It is good to be here. It's good yeah. to talk to you. Yeah, we missed last week because uh, you were traveling. I was. Yep. Went to see my family in Connecticut a little bit, which mm -hmm. was nice. Uh, but I'm back now. Nice. Back ready for, a, for an, a new episode of the Bowtie right. Sales Guy. Bowtie Sales Guy. This is where Mike and I kind of take our 30 plus years of sales experience and... Uh, and try to condense it down into lessons that we have learned, mistakes we have made, things yep. that have gone well, things that haven't gone well, and uh, encourage you to be the best salesperson you can be. We want to be your friend in the sales game because we all know it's good to have kind of that partner, that person who's by your side who's got your back. I agree, and I was, you know, I was thinking that when we were getting ready to meet today. Having a person that you can talk to is great. And last week, and I'm going to leave out the details. I'll let you fill in. But it was not last week or the week before. You called me. Now, you don't call me very much. We don't right. talk on the phone much. Most we of text. our conversations are, are by text. So when you called, I was like, I probably should take this. And I could just tell from the get-go when you, when you and I, I'm paraphrasing here, but I think it was, dude. I think that was how it started. <laughs> <laughs> and I could just hear the excitement in your voice and the energy. You said, I just closed the biggest sale of my career and it was really great to yeah. be able to share that moment with you because you can share it with your friends that yeah. aren't in sales and you can share it with your family that's not in sales but only another sales professional really understands the significance of that yeah. how much time and effort went into it and when you close the biggest one of your career you yeah. want to have someone to share it with and yeah. so hopefully everybody has that that's that's in yeah. sales yeah it's uh i can't i can't share the details of that yet uh, but it was funny. My team, I'm not sure they believed me. Right. Because <laughs> <that> right? <laughs> it was. <laughs> and uh, they said, hey, how about we schedule a call with everybody involved and just kind of talk this through? Because uh, I think they wanted to get confirmation. And that call went really well. And then today I've got another follow up call that's just, you know, you, you, you get the yes. Yeah. And then there's always a little bit more work to oh, do. Yeah. And, uh, and we're in that stage now where there's a little bit more work to do. Uh, we have to, we'll have a conversation later offline over cigars, uh, about, uh, about compensation. For oh, this, uh, that I'm excited yeah, to hear about. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we will share with everybody, uh, this story at some point. Can't talk about it yet, yeah. uh, because of the nature of it. But yeah, that's, it's absolutely, it's so important to have somebody that you can share the wins with. Yeah. Someone also that can commiserate on the losses and someone that can help you think through how to fix things. Exactly. And one of the things we're, we're going to talk about today is what happens when you've made the sale and then things go bad after the fact. Yep. And uh, what is your role as a salesperson? How do you respond? What do you do? You feel like, okay... I did my job. My job was to get it across the finish line and get the yes, get the signed contract, whatever that might be. But then something falls down later in the process. Yeah. And, uh, and what do you do as a salesperson? Yeah. I mean, I think salespeople inherently, most of us, referrals are something we all strive for because it, it, mm -hmm. it tends to just make the sales process a lot easier. And so, you know, getting the sale is hard mm -hmm. to get it. But then once it's done, you're hoping that that person is going to say, well, hey, I know this guy or this girl that can take care of that for you and send yeah. them to you. But what happens sometimes, is depending on what you're selling, is, yeah, you make the sale, but then it comes for implementation or installation. And you start to hear things from your customers that are less than positive. Things like 
hey, I'm a little frustrated with this, or this isn't going the way that you said, or it's not going very smooth, or I'm really having some trouble here. And the way that you respond to that, mm -hmm. I mean, you can kind of just look at it. You're on this line, right? Kind of at that 50% line. And your response is either going to take you to hero or to zero in terms of yeah. referrals. And so uh, that response is going to be critical. Yeah. Long time, long time bow tie sales guy listeners. I, I'm, you know, because we've been doing this for so very long. Eight weeks, yeah. nine weeks. <laughs> uh, folks that have listened to all of our episodes know that um, that my wife and I have uh, purchased solar panels. Yeah. And... You know, we've we talked we've talked about that process a couple of times. Once with a really bad salesperson who we were basically begging him to sell us solar panels, and he talked himself out of the deal. And uh, and we have since uh, purchased new solar panels uh, for or we've purchased solar panels from another company, and uh, whose salesperson was fantastic. We are in the installation process right now, and. Um, is a part of this, we also got a new HVAC system and, uh, and that got installed first and, uh, gotten, it was installed for about a week. And, uh, one Sunday morning, uh, I was just kind of waking up and Vanessa was looking at her phone and I and heard this noise. I'm like, what, what is that? And I realized we kind of realized at the same moment that, our ceiling was dripping and it was, it was like right out of Schitt's Creek. <laughs> Moira! Right. You know? uh, right above our bed, dripping down oh, onto yeah. Vanessa That's was good. water. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, we, this is a Sunday morning. So we, you know, left a message with the, with the HVAC folks. It's the same company as the solar company. And, uh, and that afternoon a tech came out and, uh, they said, listen, you know, these things happen, you know, what, what matters is not if problems happen, but what matters is what you do about it. Right. So two nights ago, we are putting our daughter to bed and, uh, I was downstairs making coffee for the morning and I hear Vanessa upstairs and she lets out a, a scream, oh, lets boy. out a yell and, uh. I go running upstairs, and there in our daughter's bedroom, water dripping. Ooh, another leak. Another oh, leak. That's rough. So the next morning, we, and this was a lot of water. And uh, the next morning, tech comes out again. He's working on it. He said, you know, he cracks a joke. He says, you know, we, we need to quit meeting this way. And like, absolutely, I'm with you. But then while the tech was in my attic fixing yet another leak, my original sales guy called and I don't know if he knew what was going on. What he said to me was, Hey, I noticed that the solar panels got installed because they've, they've been installed. Now we have new HVAC system, new roof, new solar panels. We have had nonstop worker men yeah. at our house over the last couple of weeks. And, uh, he said, I noticed that, um, the solar panels got installed. I wanted to see if everything went well and you're happy and satisfied. And I was like, well, well, <laughs> one of your techs is in our attic right now fixing a second leak. Yeah. And, and so we are in this limbo point now where, cause he, he then went on to tell me they've got a referral system that if we refer somebody, we'll get a $300 bonus. It's actually doubled now to $600. And he's hoping I'll send referrals his way. And we're really in this unknown moment yeah. of like, I got to see how this turns out. Yes. Yep. Now, when I told him, hey, listen, here's what's going on. You know, your tech is in my attic for the second time fixing a leak. And, you know, this has been much more of a headache than we ever imagined. You know, get solar panels, they said. That would be fantastic, they <laughs> said. That's the moment that salespeople, I mean, we've all been there. Yeah. Where the customer is not satisfied. They might not be dissatisfied, but they're not yet satisfied. Right. And it is a crucial moment. Yep. Now, so often, salespeople, that scares them off. Yep. They want to stick their head in the sand. 
ignore it, hope it goes away. That's not the approach you would advocate for. No, because I recently had a very frustrating experience and I sent some text messages to my rep and all I got back was, well, that's just the way it is. Mm. That's just how things go. There's no, we don't really have any, you know, leeway on that. Sorry. Text message back. Mm. Which to me was like, okay, first of all, don't text me back. Yeah. If I email or text you and you sense there's some frustration, some anger, or if I'm just not happy, take the time to either pick up the phone and call me if you can, or if you really can, set up a time to come see me. Say, hey, can we set some time up where I can come talk to you? And then go work out the problem. But a text message back to me that, nah, that's just the way it is. I promise you I'll never send you a referral because if that's how you're going to treat me, mm -hmm. I will not put my name on sending somebody to you. So no, that is definitely not the response I would look for. I mean, I need somebody that's going to be empathetic. Yeah. Somebody that's going to come out and, and really talk to me. And, say, and, and even if it, there is no leeway, mm -hmm. right? Even if it can't be yes. done the way that I wish it could be done, if you will show me a little bit of empathy and explain to me, here's why we are doing the process the way that we're doing. And yes, it may seem a little frustrating, but in the end, we're going to deliver just as we promised. Mm -hmm. But that test message, a text message back just saying, bah, sorry, that's the way it is. No, nah, that's just, that's not going to cut yeah. her up. Yeah, the empathy is so tremendously important because you've got to meet your customer where they're at. Right. You know, and, and this is something that salespeople do in the sales process right. when you're, initially meeting with them when you're building a relationship when you're getting to know them you you mirror them you try to understand them you 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 delve deep into who your customer is so that you can make a connection with them well you got to do that again mm -hmm. if, in these moments of frustration when right. things are not going the way they they need to go yeah i mean and don't let the tech do it it's not the tech's job yep the tech's job is to fix it and he, and he could be empathetic, right. but at the end of the day, the salesperson is the one who said, here's what we are going to do. Here's how the process is going to go. And so the salesperson should be the person that is the lead point on that. You know, back when we were in media and <clears throat> we would, you know, come up with this great advertising campaign, right? We'd come up with these wonderful commercials, great copy. We'd set the expectations. Look, it's going to take a little while before the phone starts to ring. I mean, people need to see the commercial, but you're three or four days into the campaign and your phone's ringing. I'm not happy. I'm not getting any calls. Nobody's coming in saying they saw it. I haven't seen the commercial. Now, there's a lot of ways that you can handle that. And we've seen some reps who just like, well, just, you know, sorry. Yep. I mean, but the approach that you and I would take is we yep. got to go back out. Yep. We'll re-explain the process. Listen, just trust the process. It's going to take people seeing that commercial a certain number of times yep. before you start to see results. Yep. And typically, once you go back over what you explain in the first place, the expectations, it helps to just kind of calm their nerves, yep. let them be heard. They were able to be heard because yep. they were frustrated. And then... A month later, month and a half, we're checking back. I'm like, oh, yeah, things are going the way you said they were yep. going to go. So empathy, yep. expectations, resetting those. Now, let's talk about execution. We hadn't planned these to yeah. be like E-words here, but it's right. happening. Yeah. This alliteration is happening right in the moment. So empathy is key. Resetting the expectations right. is key. So then there's execution issues, too. Yeah. What can the salesperson do to make sure that things are being executed the way they're supposed to? Yeah, I think you need to stay ahead of the process. You need to be involved in the process. Yeah. So take real estate, for example. When someone's buying a house for the first time, even for the second time, they don't really know the process. And your job as the realtor or the loan officer, whatever you're doing, is to stay ahead of all of those things, making sure that appraisals are being ordered and home inspections are being ordered, that people are doing their jobs. And your job, you're the orchestra, right? The, uh, what are the conductor yes. of this orchestra, making sure that all of these things are happen happening. And I think that happens really in any sales, whether yeah. you're buying a car, if you're doing real estate in media, you as the salesperson are the one that ultimately is responsible for the execution yeah. of whatever the product is. And then internally, right? because sometimes what happens is your internal team breaks down or yep. your internal process breaks down. Uh, you as the salesperson have to become the advocate for your customer right. within your internal team. Yep. This is why this customer matters. Yeah. This is why we've got to do it right. You've got to be the one who 
pitches a fit maybe internally when it doesn't go the way it's supposed to go. And you've got to advocate for things being executed the way they're supposed to be. I I know there's been times where, um, you know, I I remember a, uh, a particular media campaign that I had sold and uh, it was to a a large company and there was one piece of it that was um, kind of minor. It was, it was kind of a tack on at the end. It wasn't, it wasn't the most important thing, right. it, but it was, there was a, a component of a digital campaign. It was a full blown campaign with one digital component. And it was like a month or so after, after everything took place when I realized that that digital component never happened. Yeah. It just didn't happen. Because there was some breakdown internally and I had trusted that people were going to do their jobs and it was going to happen the way it was supposed to. And it just didn't. And I had to pitch a royal fit Yeah. because there were some people that were like, well, it was a month ago and the customer doesn't know. Like, yeah, but if the customer finds out, like you can't just ignore this stuff. Yeah. You have got to become the squeaky wheel internally on behalf of your customer. Yeah, and it's your integrity. Yeah. You made a commitment to that customer to yeah. deliver a certain campaign. Yes. And whether they knew if it happened or not is irrelevant mm-hmm. because you it's your integrity, it's your reputation. And yeah, you do need to do it internally. And I've found over the years that there is a way to do it, right? You have there's a certain way you got to handle it because you certainly don't want to cause all this strife internally. But you do need to put your foot down and get to the right people and say, "Listen, this matters. Yeah, this matters for my reputation. It matters for our reputation as a company because we need to do the right thing. Because inevitably, things are going to go wrong." Yep. I mean, I've had very few sales where everything was perfect. There was always something, always yes. a bump in the road yes. that required me as the salesperson to get involved and make sure that my customer was happy. Even like you said, listen, mistakes happen. Yes. Leaks are going to happen. But if your guys come out and fix it, they fix it right. If my sales rep shows empathy and at the end of the day, the entire project works, then maybe, yeah, we'll get you a referral. But all of those steps are so critical because one missing piece and I'm probably not going because our names are mm-hmm. important. And if I refer someone to you, I need to know without a doubt that you are going to take good care of them. Yeah. And if there's bumps in mine, I can't really trust you to take care of theirs. Yep. So we've got empathy. Yep. We've got uh, expectations, yep. resetting those. We've got execution. Yep. I got a fourth one. What's the fourth one? Let's hear it. (laughs) Is it another E? It is. All right. (laughs) So I think what you need to do is see these problems after the sale as opportunities for you to excel. Yeah. Absolutely. As a salesperson. Yeah. This is your golden opportunity to deepen your relationship with your customer Because you go above and beyond. Right. Because you do everything you can to fix it, whether you can fix it or not. Don't shy away from this battle. Run into it and and use this as an opportunity to excel. So let me let me tell a story that involves both of us. I once inherited one of your clients. Uh Oh. (laughs) You remember? Uh maybe. Yeah. And uh, as the story goes on, it'll probably come back to you. Yep. And you had moved on from the media company. Okay. okay. And uh, I had inherited one of your clients. I wanted to go to that client and pitch them um, a, uh, a new big idea. And there was from the previous uh, sale that, that had been made with this client, there was some. I don't know, icing on the cake gifts that were promised that were out of your control. It was actually autographed pictures by a celebrity who was going to be in town for an event. I remember now. Now you got it. (laughs) And it was promised that if this company became a sponsor of this event, that they would get some, and it was, it was by the event promised them that they would get some autographed pictures of this celebrity. Uh, the event never delivered on that. 
it wasn't our responsibility to do that. It wasn't your responsibility to do that. It was, that was part of the relationship of the event. But I knew if I'm going into this client's office for the first time, I want to make sure that I lead, like, I want to address anything that's left over. I want to make sure there's no bad taste in her mouth at all. I want to make sure that I have the opportunity to excel. Yeah. So I jumped on eBay and I bought and then expensed. <laughs> hey, someone's got to pay. Autographed yeah. pictures of that celebrity. Yeah. And I think there was, they, there had been, they had been promised two or three. Yeah. I bought four or five. Yeah. I got as many as I could. Yeah. And I spent a little chunk of change on it, you know, but you know, again, I expensed it, but I went into her office the first time and said, Hey, I realized that like the event messed up and you never got this. That was promised as a part of this package. Here you go. Yeah. I made it happen. It's a home run. It was an opportunity to excel. Yep. That and was, uh, beyond excelling, Rob. I mean, yeah. most people wouldn't even have thought of that. They would have been, I'm really sorry that didn't happen. You know, we'll, we'll try to make it up to you. But you made it happen. I bought them on eBay. You bought them on eBay. <laughs> Way to go, man. That's a great story. I think that's a, that is a great example of doing what you need to do after the sale to excel, right? Mm -hmm. And to either get that zero or hero yep. status. So yep. Very good. Yeah. So the big idea is when you are faced with an after sale crisis, don't shy away from it run towards it, you know, have empathy for your customer, re-establish the expectations, make sure your team is executing and see this as an opportunity to excel. Absolutely. So Mike, you've got a, uh, a tip for today. I for do. Folks. And I think you like this one I too, own. because I, you are a metrics guy, right? Yeah, I am. But I think one of the critical things that salespeople need to do is measure their activity. Mm. And what I mean by that is, you know, you want to start with how many calls or emails or whatever your prospecting format is, do you need to make in order to make contact with a potential prospect yeah. or customer that you're, that you want to, yeah. you know, upgrade or whatever. So how many of those do you have to make to make that contact? And then what, once you make that contact, how many of those contacts are actually going to let you have a meeting? Right. So you're measuring that, you know, call to contact, contact a meeting. And then the people that let you set the meeting, they're all not going to let you make a proposal. So how many of those meetings actually lead to a proposal? And then once you do the proposal, how many of those proposals lead to an actual close? Yeah. And knowing those numbers, and that's something that you mm -hmm. can do very simply on an Excel spreadsheet, on a notepad, yeah. gives you a roadmap to hit whatever your goal is. So if you know what your average sale is and you want to make you know, a certain amount of money for that year, you just back into it. Well, if I want to make $100,000 a year, how many sales do I need to make? And in order to make those number of sales, how many proposals do I need to do? In order to do them many proposals, how many meetings do I have to have all the way back down yep. to those calls? Yep. A couple of things with this. One is don't just Google it no. and use the number you find online. No. Because everybody's different. Yeah. Everybody's different and your numbers are going to be different. Right. So you've got to figure out what your numbers are. Right. Some of you are going to be, are going to be much better at, you know, at making contacts through email than other people are, you know, on the phone and it's going to flip flop. You're like, so you've got to figure out what your numbers are. You've got to start simply by tracking. It. Right. Because I know what we, the goal you ultimately want to get to is what you described with being able to predict, okay, I need five more sales this month. How many emails do I have to send to get exactly. there? And you'll be able to know that, but you can't know that right out of the gate until you begin to track it. Yeah. So you begin to see and ask the question, how many emails am I sending today? How many phone calls am I send, I'm making? How many, uh, face-to-face -face visits am I, am I making? Begin to track those things. Yep. And then how many proposals, like how many meetings am I getting? How many proposals am I writing? Begin to track those things and track them in a way that you can tell, okay, emails lead to this number of meetings and, and phone calls lead to this number of meetings and, and face-to-face -face visits lead to this number of meetings. Because then what you can do is not just be able to predict 
but you can also begin to um, examine your process and see how you can improve. Exactly. Because as soon as you can tick some of those numbers up, oh, that has an exponential effect on yeah, things. Yeah, and what you need to do, Rob, and I like what you're saying is you need to do like A, B testing. Yeah. You know what I mean? You need to do that A, B testing where it's, did this type of call work or was it this type of call? Was this email yep. or that type of email? So those are the ones that you need to measure to see which yep. ones are going to be more effective. This is something that everybody can begin to do today. Yeah. And that's the key. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, we are the Bowtie Sales Guys. This has been uh, our first face-to-face, in-person, fully vaccinated, fully vaccinated. Uh, Bowtie Sales Guy episode. And uh, it was great being with you today. We look forward to being with you again next week. If you're watching us on Facebook, give us a little thumbs up. Uh, ask any questions you might have. Find the Facebook page and like it. Uh, if you're on YouTube, we'd love to see your comments. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, all those places. Thanks so much for being with us. And uh, Mike, let's go get a cigar. I think that's a great idea.